And thank you for joining us for the opening ceremony of the 11th annual ISC HBC Advisory Student Cluster Competition. I'm Brian Sparks, Director of Worldwide Operations for the Council. And before we begin, let me express my gratitude for everyone on the call, students, judges, administration, who've all helped bring this competition to life. Now to help open the competition, I'd like to introduce Galad Shiner, Chairman of the Council, and Negus Sislak, Marketing Manager at ISC Group. Galad and Negus, how are you today? Hi, personally, great. Uh, Negus? Hi, Galad. Hi, Brian. Hi, everyone. Yeah, nice to be Welcome. here with you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honored, actually, I'm honored. Um, the, the, the HPCA AI Advisory Council um, was established um, in 2008. Many years ago, the main motivation to bridge the gap between HPC technology and its usage, meaning to make sure that on one side we are able to fully utilize, fully utilize the, the HPC technology to, to run or to solve very complex problems. Uh, and then by doing that, we will drive the acceleration of the creation of even faster or better technologies. This mission becomes more and more important as we moving forward. If we look today, um, and obviously we are combining AI and HPC or scientific computing together because it's the same kind of workloads. They need the same kind of technology, the same kind of infrastructures. Uh, they're dealing with massive problems. So if we look on that, we're seeing that there is a fast increase in the amount of supercomputing or HPC applications that are being created. And we're seeing a big increase in the amount of people that use supercomputing or use HPC. And we can foresee or forecast that essentially in few years, in few years, every company, every organization, every company will need to have access to HPC. Every company in the world will need to have access to supercomputing. And we will see we will see the need to actually have supercomputing become a service. So cloud or, or cloud, cloud made computing a service, but today supercomputing or HPC is not really a service because you need to have access to a supercomputing infrastructure. But in the future, in a few years, supercomputing will become a service. And more people will need to use it. And therefore the mission of, of the HPCI Advisory Council to bridge the gap between technology and its usage becomes more and more important. And as part of that mission or managing, and here I'm going to thank the IEC group for their great collaborations over the years. Having the, the student cluster competition, it's an important part as part of, as part of our mission, as part of the world mission in that sense. And this competition helps to bring together universities and students and supercomputing centers and, and HPC professionals and to, to help, help bring more education and more experience of using supercomputing into more people. And we can look on students that participated in the competition years ago and, and see that today they are in leading positions in different kind of research, comp, research organizations or commercial companies, and actually they're driving the usage of supercomputing forward. So it's an, it's an honor of us to be able to manage this competition. We are grateful and want to thank all the student teams that will participate in this year's competition. It's not easy with the COVID-19, which is still here, and some other aspects that are going uh, globally or different places in, in the world. Um, so we're grateful for the students uh, that are going to participate. Anything that we can help with, by the way, we cannot, you know, we cannot solve everything, but if the teams or students have any sort of challenges that we can help with, please let us know. This year, uh, we will have a, actually a combined competition. So for multiple years, the competition was mainly a, a physical competition in Germany as part of the ISC conference. In the last couple of years, we went more virtual uh, and did the virtual competitions. And now we, we are happy to actually go back and part of the competition to be physical competition. And hopefully looking forward, we want to make it uh, back to be a, a primary a physical competition. But the ability to combine 
in one competition, utilizing existing supercomputing centers, getting an experience of using uh, leading supercomputing centers in parallel of building your own for the five teams that will participate uh, also physically in Hamburg. I think it's a great experience. Definitely great, great, great experience. So I want to thank the teams first. I think the student teams are the more, more most important part of this competition. So I want to thank the student teams um, and their advisors. I want to thank IEC Group uh, for their support and collaborations over the years and looking forward for many years to come. Um, I want to thank the team that organized uh, Ophir and the team and the folks that are uh, uh, helping on the applications, which they will give, uh, uh, they will talk uh, in this welcome session. Brian, uh, Sydney, and the rest for helping. Then Olds uh, for, for uh, helping to monitor and to broadcast the news from the competition so more teams around the world will be able to learn and, and see what's going on. Um, and with that, um, I know that I had a long speech, longer speech that I, I plan to, longer speech that I plan to. Um, but for that, uh, uh, Negus, I'll, I'll move the, the, the virtual mic to you to say a few words or more than a few words. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short. Thank you, Gillard. Thank you very much um, for giving me the opportunity to join all of you today and um, to the teams and the juries, judges. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our annual ISE uh, student cluster competition. 11 years ago, we started this competition, as Gillard said, with uh, five teams. Started it in the beautiful city of Hamburg. And uh, coincidentally, this year, we are again returning to the show floor in Hamburg and again with um, five teams. Um, it doesn't mean that we only have five teams in the competition. Uh, we have uh, 17 teams in total. Uh, it would have been uh, super exciting to see all the 17 teams on the show floor. And uh, yeah, we hope that we can achieve this once our governments um, get the pandemic under control, hopefully um, in the near future. As you know, the ISC student cluster competition uh, continues to enjoy the recognition as the world's uh, premier cluster competition, where even winners of regional uh, competitions come to us. All this wouldn't be possible without the commitment of our partner and friend, the HPC AI Advisory Council. We know it's not an easy task to keep the competition interesting and educational year after year for the last 11 years. So here I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone on the HPC AI Advisory Council organizing team. I would also like to thank the judges and juries for taking the time to help organize and evaluate the online as well as the on-site um, competitions. The Pittsburgh uh, Supercomputing Center, University of Toronto, and the HPAC AI Cluster Center, they have our deepest appreciation as well. Thank you for allowing the teams to use your clusters. Otherwise, the online uh, competition would be very difficult. And now some words about um, the conference and the exhibition. As you know, this year we will offer an in-person conference and exhibition that is our main focus. Um, but we will also offer a good portion of the uh, conference program online for those who aren't able to make it to Hamburg. We hope that the student teams who will all be receiving their um, registration vouchers um, complimentary vouchers, uh, that is, once the registration opens. We hope that they will reserve some time to catch the uh, on-demand content during the conference and use the opportunity to reach out to other attendees and exhibitors. As Gilad said, um, the connections you make during the competition gets you very far in, uh, in, in, in HBC. Finally, uh, we hope you can join us once again, and that is for the announcement of the competition winners on Wednesday, um, June 2nd. Um, 
with that, and until we uh, speak again, I wish all the teams um, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Galada Negus. We're very thankful to the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center and the University of Toronto Synet Supercomputing Center for helping supply the teams participating in the virtual portion of our competition with leading supercomputing resources. Joining us now is Danny Gruner, CTO at the Synet High Performance Computing Consortium, and Sean Brown, Director at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. Welcome, Danny and Sean. Danny, I'll start with you to share a few words, and then we'll move to Sean. Okay? Danny, okay. how are you? Thank you. I'm well, thanks. I hope all of you are well, too. Uh, it's always very exciting to see um, what we call the kids competing. Um, we can all build infrastructure, you know, bigger, smaller. We can build, you know, all kinds of machines. But what good are the machines if we don't train uh, people on how to use them? So in my view, the single most important thing we do is education and training. And this, um, this is why we're, we're so happy to continue to contribute and uh, welcome the teams to, to run their codes on our machines, uh, giving them real world experience on, on a cluster that's a production cluster. And um, all I want to say is, you know, the best of luck to all the teams. You're not alone. You can always ask for help on how to run on, on our systems. Uh, make sure that you contact us. It's very simple. Just support at signup.utoronto.ca. We'll make the link available. And um, as I said, good luck and let's see what you guys can do. Thank you, Danny. Sean, we'll move it to you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Sean Brown. I'm the director at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. And I'm extremely proud of and excited about the fact that we're making available bridges to our latest uh, research computing platform, a uh, heterogeneous research computing platform available for this competition. As uh, Danny said, you know, it's a world where uh, the future is in high performance computing and in computational research. And it's gratifying on an international level to see all of the, the participants in this, this competition. You are the future of our field. And uh, the training that you're receiving by doing this is, is absolutely invaluable. And I'm excited to see what you all will do with our resources, as well as what you all will accomplish in the future. So thank you for joining us. And uh, as, as, uh, as with, uh, the, with Cynet, uh, if you need help on one of the, on the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center computer, uh, you can just email help at psc.edu and we'll, we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you very much and good luck with your competition. Great. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Danny. Joining me now is Ophir Mayar, HPC Works Special Interest Group Co-Chair and the Cluster Center Manager for the HPC Advisory Council. He's spent many years bringing these student cluster competitions to life and he's back again. Ophir, thank you for joining. Hi, Brian. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So um, we'll continue here with the introduction of the teams, the judges and the applications. Uh, this year, I'm very excited. We have uh, teams from all over the world, really, from US, from uh, uh, Colombia, from Europe, from, from Africa, from Asia, and from Australia. It's, uh, it's very interesting. It's going to be very challenging. It's very nice to see uh, this wide participation. 17 student teams, that's uh, quite a lot of teams. You can see here all the teams, uh, logo, universities, different uh, universities around the world. And uh, we're grateful for you and we will support you and we'll give you everything uh, we can to help you with the uh, competition. We want you to learn, to enjoy and to, make, to help that it will help your future uh, in a way. Of course, we want to thank all the, stu all the student advisors, all the uh, professors and university advisors that helped the students uh, along the years. I know some of the advisors here many years and support the teams. And it's uh, very nice to see this uh, continuing uh, support for the student teams uh, for success. So thank you, advisors. A little bit about the um, uh, performance benchmark, uh, benchmarking challenges that we uh, uh, tailored for the team or gave the teams. Uh, we will have three HPC applications that we'll talk in a minute, NWCAM, uh, ICON, and Incompact 3D. Uh, we have a coding challenge for the uh, remote team, and this is very exciting this year. 
So uh, we also going to talk about that. For the on-site teams, we have our uh, micro benchmarks that we do uh, every year, almost every year. And uh, for the on-site teams also, we have a secret application that we also do on-site uh, uh, normally. So that will be revealed in the, uh, only on the on-site uh, show floor on the first day. Icon is the weather, weather forecast uh, application. Uh, we have here with us uh, Panos, is a HPC group leader, or DKRZ. Panos, uh, uh, do you want to say a few words? Yes, yes here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, yes, um, Icon is a next generation uh, weather and climate model. And it's been, it's, uh, it has been developed Well, the development has started by the German Weather Service, so the DWD, and the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology uh, in Hamburg, uh, where the ISC will take place this year. And uh, a few years ago, also DKRZ, so the German Climate Computing Center, where I'm working at, uh, has joined the development team uh, and uh, KI team, the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, Uh, KIT is uh, developing the chemistry uh, model uh, of uh, ICON and um, the DKRZ is focusing on uh, the high performance computing um, aspects uh, of the model. So optimizing the communication, implementing parallel IO, uh, coupling, uh, for instance, uh, between uh, atmosphere and ocean. And uh, so, The, the focus of uh, the uh, next generation's climate model, uh, which is uh, our interest, uh, is going more towards not only predicting possible future climate scenarios, but uh, uh, more on the, uh, examining the impact of uh, this, uh, the climate change uh, to Earth. So the, uh, there is a huge... Um, European initiative or project, which is called Destination Earth. And there the uh, focus is to have a sort of digital twin of uh, the planet and do all of this um, model um, the simulations so as to see also the, uh, uh, how climate change uh, will affect uh, societies, etc. And all of this uh, means that uh, the, um, the climate model must be able to uh, include uh, many processes and many uh, small scale processes, physical processes, chemical processes, biological, botanical, whatever. And uh, this means that uh, the uh, uh, demand on uh, uh, compute power is huge. So uh, high performance uh, computing is one uh, of the key Um, aspects uh, which enables all this uh, climate uh, or earth system uh, modeling. And in the film, you see a coupled uh, simulation, uh, atmosphere and uh, ocean. And this is the type of uh, uh, experiments we have here in uh, this uh, competition. And uh, this has a special also uh, algorithmic demands. Uh, we have uh, two models running, there is load imbalance, there are a lot of things uh, to tackle uh, and uh, to tune uh, in order to get, uh, get as much uh, performance as possible out of it. And uh, yes, uh, this is uh, the first time we are participating uh, at this uh, competition and uh, I'm very excited to be part of it. And as uh, one of the speakers before me said, uh, yes, uh, high performance uh, computing is not only the hardware, you can have the biggest uh, computer in the world, but um, if you don't have uh, the brain power to invent and program the uh, algorithms, uh, the proper algorithms and the, uh, uh, all uh, the um, fancy ideas of young students uh, to do um, uh, many Uh, new uh, methods, etc. Uh, this is far more important than the hardware. Thank you, Panos. Next application is called the uh, NW Chems, North, uh, Northwest uh, Chemistry. It's a chemistry challenge. Uh, um, we have uh, Jeff uh, Hammond, uh, principal model, uh, principal programming model architect at NVIDIA, leading it. 
it's a well known as a very long history of uh, for this application was was uh, this application was uh, was uh, you know developed many years ago and uh, this year we, we gave the team three different models to try on uh, both supercomputers and also uh, on the on the GPU part so CPU or GPU part basically we hope that uh, it will be easy and uh, we'll uh, say uh, we'll uh, congratulate the team and say good luck Good luck on that. Now moving on to the our next challenge, it's X Compact 3D. X Compact 3D, we have uh, Sylvain uh, Lazit from um, it's a reader at the uh, Computational Fluid Mechanics at Imperial College of London. Uh, Sylvain, say a few words. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, uh, everyone. So yeah, I'm Sylvain Lazit, I'm the lead developer of uh, X Compact 3D. So X Compact 3D is a computational free dynamic uh, solver to study uh, turbulent flows. Um, you might not know it or you might know it. Uh, turbulence is everywhere around us. Um, the flow around moving vehicles, hurricane, extreme weather events, the uh, blood in your, uh, in your body, the, the, the air in the lungs, um, the particles, air quality in the streets, everything is related to turbulence. So, um, in my research group, we are using high performance computing to study uh, turbulent flows. And this is very similar to this uh, concept of uh, digital twin. So for example, when we are trying to better understand how to optimize the power of uh, wind farms, instead of uh, going in the lab or trying to do something in, uh, in the field, we are trying to do a, 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 virtual, tw tw a virtual twin sorry, of, of the wind farm, and then we can try to extract relevant information. We can try to improve the, their power output. This is just a, a, a single example on how we can harness high-performance computing to the benefit of uh, society. To go back to the challenge, um, X-Compact 3D is a, a Fortran-based uh, framework, so I hope there is a lot of uh, Fortran aficionados in the, uh, in the among the students. Um, it has been designed for uh, CPU calculation. We are, we are working on the GPU part um, as as we speak. But the challenge is about um, how best to use the two supercomputers that you have at your disposal. So looking at you know different um, uh, Fortran compiler, different options. A different MPI library and, and find the, the optimal set of parameters uh, to, to run XCompact 3D in a setup where you will simulate uh, two wind turbines. Um, so good luck everyone for the challenge. I, I, I want to point out that uh, XCompact 3D is also going to be used for the coding challenge and I think um, Ophir is going to say a few words about that. So thank you very much everyone and good luck for the competition. Thank you Sylvain. And uh, yes, we are, we are going to have the coding challenge uh, and we are going to use the x 3D for that. Uh, we have here uh, Filippo Spiga, um, a HPC uh, developer, a manager at NVIDIA, uh, to say a few words on that. And after that, well, I will also invite uh, DK Panda from Xscale Solutions uh, because we are using the Envapage uh, DPU MPI I to say a few words, uh, Filippo, do you hear me? So my name is Filippo. I've been supporting and helping the student class competition for several years. And this year I, I've been proposing to all of you um, this particular coding challenge, I would say one of a kind, where we're going to look at uh, one code, as Compact 3D, and how to leverage uh, um, a MPI library developed by the Xscale Solutions uh, and Envapage 2 DPU and a piece of hardware called the Blue NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPU, uh, which allows to essentially offload uh, some set of MPI routines, and so MPI collecting in this case, uh, to a very particular piece of hardware that take care of communicate and do a whole bunch of optimization um, by leaving the CPU free to do other work. And we believe this paradigm is going to be a game changer going forward in high performance computing. So uh, we took a code, it's Compact 3D. We, we talk about it during the, the when we do a, a deep dive on the code. There's a lot of fall to all. And uh, we are challenging you uh, and invite you to try to move the collective operation from blocking to non-blocking and understand when and how getting a performance improvement and, um, and essentially compete against each other uh, to who comes with the best solution. 
Thank you, Filippo. Um, we have also a, a Professor D.K. Panda. D.K., do you, you hear me? Yes, hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear. Yes, yes, hi. Um, so it's a pleasure. I'm um, speaking here on behalf of the Excel Solutions. Um, as uh, Sylvain and uh, Filippo indicated, um, so this is a new challenge we are trying to do this year uh, with the X-Compact 3D and with the latest uh, MAP is to DPU um, uh, software, which is the MPI library to take advantage of the DPU technology. Um, so my team members and I will be very happy to, uh, to, to work with um, all the teams. If you have any questions, um, uh, because this is a very leading edge technology, if you experience any issues, um, uh, we'll be very happy to extend help. And uh, we hope that we'll be really able to um, indicate very good uh, solutions here. Um, to take advantage of the DPU technologies. Um, so best of luck to all the teams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, indeed, this year is, is uh, it's very challenging. We have uh, three application coding challenge and the secret app for the on-site. And uh, with that, I would like to thank all the judges, all the committee members of this, on the, that uh, are uh, supporting us uh, through the years and uh, specifically this year. Um, it's, uh, it's very hard and, uh, if I thank you for the dedication and for the work you do for the, for the teams. And, uh, so with that, uh, I would like to thank all the teams. I would like you to join our, uh, award ceremony, um, and all the, uh, award ceremony one that will be on site and will be, will uh, broadcast it also for the remote teams on June 1st and, um, 5.15, that's what, where we do the on-site uh, award ceremony. And follow us uh, on Twitter. Uh, anyone, any, any few words? No, I, I think this officially kicks off the competition, and we look forward to announcing those results live. Thank you to ISC, Nagus, and especially Martin and Thomas Moyer for their support of the student cluster competition throughout this past decade, for sure. And thank you again to the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center and the University of Toronto for your help and donation of supercomputing resources. Thank you to all the students who are participating. We hope you continue to find this experience rewarding, and we look forward to watching your success. Good luck, teams. See you all soon. <laughs>